Hi, I'm Dave Taddeo and this is Coders Tech. Today on Coders Tech I'm trying something a little bit different. Uh, usually with the webinars that I do, I use a program called GoToWebinar from Citrix. It's a really great program. It uh, does a lot and has worked well for me. But today I'm going to use uh, Google Plus Hangouts. Uh, the one thing I like about Google Plus Hangouts is that it records the video and automatically puts it to YouTube for me so I don't have to do all that work myself. Uh, it can be frustrating at times. Also with Google Plus Hangouts, uh, if you can see along the bottom there, uh, I have a little lower third of this information. Um, but I will, in the future, I'll also be able to have guests or uh, have other people come on and uh, watch and comment and talk and uh, have it a little more interactive that way. Uh, and their video uh, will be added along the bottom there and you'll be able to see them. Okay, today on uh, Coders Tech, I want to talk a little bit about uh, automation in FilmStar using design, monitor, measure, crystal, uh, whatever you have and whatever you need. Uh, we'll go over some of the basic code and uh, how to make your life a little bit easier uh, if you're trying to automate things uh, across the board uh, using all of those in uh, your entire process flow from designing to uh, monitoring to measuring and then having all of those put all into one document, save to one space. It comes very easy if you start to use automation in Filmstar. We're also going to talk a little bit about uh, ophthalmic uh, ARs and why they're green. Over the past uh, year or more, maybe 18 months or so, I've asked a number of people when I come across them uh, why AR coatings on eyeglasses are green and why the reflection is uh, in the green spectrum around 5 40 or so, maybe 550, uh, the reflection is around 1%. And finally, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, nanotechnology and 3D printing. Um, there's some interesting developments in 3D printing uh, and what that means for the uh, optics and coding industry. Okay, so to get started, we're going to look at Filmstar and automation. So I'm going to start sharing my screen with you right now, and uh, you're going to notice something funny, but we'll get out of that in a second, okay? Okay, here we go. Okay, let's move out of that for a second. There. Okay, so I've got Filmstar open, and uh, actually, as you can see, I have an ophthalmic AR, a green. Uh, I was working on that a little bit earlier. Um, but to get to the automation, uh, most of you may know if you use uh, design from uh, FTG software that these little numbers up here do automatic things for you. And in this case, uh, number four for me, I think this comes standard with Filmstar when you first install it. Uh, number four for me starts an Excel table and uh, plots the design that I have here uh, into a table uh, and we'll take a look at that right now. So I'm going to click that. Excel is going to pop up here and as you can see it's filling in the cells based on uh, the design that I have. And in the top corner here you've got wavelength and nanometers. Uh, down the side we have uh, 400, 405, 410 every 5 nanometers. I believe that goes all the way up to 800 nanometers. Yes, there it is. And along the top we have uh, reflection and p-polarization at zero degrees, reflection and s-polarization at zero degrees, 10 degrees, 20 degrees, and 30 degrees. Uh, and all the values have been filled in here. And right here you can see the design data uh, page has been created along with in front of sheet one, sheet two, and sheet three. Anyway, so let's take a look at that and uh, find out how that works and what you can do uh, to modify this and to get used to uh, automating uh, these types of things for your specific purposes. So if we go into Tools and we open up Basic Editor, and then I'm going to go into File and Open, and this will bring up uh, a whole bunch of uh, basic files. Most of these have been provided uh, by FTG software 
when you uh, installed design. Um, but I'm looking for the one that I just did, which is Excel table. There it is. I'm going to open it. And here it is. Here's the code. And look at that. It's, it's actually short. It's not very complicated. And the first thing I want you to take a look at is, uh, first of all, and everything in green is just um, notes by the author of this, uh, this basic command, this basic uh, program here. And the author is FTG uh, Software. At the top, we have some um, declarations of variables and uh, what they are. So as you can see here, we have wave, angle, RS, RP, TS, TP, and so on. And as we move down, first thing to look at here is DIM Excel app as Excel application, Excel book as Excel workbook, Excel worksheet. And then just below that, new Excel application, workbooks add, worksheet add, Excel sheet name. And the name of that is design data. And if we can take a look down here on Excel, that's the name here. Excel app visible true and Excel sheet cells 1-1 equals W nanometers. And so as you look through here, it's actually quite easy to read. Even if you've never done any basic programming before, it's easy to read and see what this basic program does uh, in the automation for Filmstar design in this case. And as we continue down, you can see wave uh, 400 to 800, step 5, which we saw earlier. Um, RP, RS for wave 400 to 800, step 5 again. And so as you can see, uh, it's easy. It really is easy. If you know some uh, basic programming, that, then that helps. If you know anybody uh, within your uh, group or your team that has any basic programming um, experience, uh, get them to come and explain some of this to you. But really, when it comes down to it, it's fairly easy to read. So as you can see, there's our Excel sheet that this particular program has generated. Now if you go into your uh, file browser and when you install Filmstar, uh, a design in this case, it goes into C WinFilm Basic 32 is where all the basic files are saved. And there's quite a few of them. A lot of them come uh, with design when you install it. <clears throat> but you can see, go through uh, and see what they are and open them up and take a look and see what they look like. Uh, you don't have to use um, the Filmstar Basic Editor to look at them. In my case, I can, let's take a look at um, any one of these. I'm going to open up. Uh, Lay Calc. I'm going to right click on it. In my case, I'm going to open with Notepad. And you can see what this one looks like. You can read what it looks like and what it's going to do. And then you can save it using uh, your own program. You don't actually have to use uh, the Filmstar basic editor. Okay, I'm going to close this, go back to the Filmstar basic editor. And uh, if you're new to this, um, just try editing one. Open any one and edit it. See what it does uh, and edit it yourself. So in this case, I'm just going to change this for wave 400 to 800 to 400 to 500, let's say. And let's change the step to 2. We'll have to go down here and make the same change. 500, step 2, and I want to, uh, for angle 0 to 30, 
let's change that to 40, step 10. And let's see what happens. I'm going to save this, go into design again, and just run that again and see if my changes are set. There we go. Perfect. It went from 400 to 500 every 2 nanometers and went from 0 degrees to 40 degrees. So take a look at those. Open up any one of them. Try it out. You can see here that uh, in this case it's opening um, Excel. You can open up a Word document uh, and have uh, data saved to a Word document, uh, whether it's a graph, whether it's uh, you know a specific uh, data that you're looking for from your design. Maybe even if you want to run um, uh, uh, tolerancing every uh, for every two percent on each layer, or whatever the case may be, uh, this comes in really, really handy. And not only that, when this is all done, whatever document I have open here, I can save that to uh, any drive, any network drive, so now this data becomes available for everybody uh, in the lab, in the, uh, in the office, um, and you can keep this for as long as you need. Uh, it's really, really handy for um, saving these documents to go back and look. Uh, so that's using automation in Filmstar. Um, look into it. Read some of the uh, some of the um, basic programs that come with Filmstar. You can also go to uh, FTG Software's website and um, search for them. You'll be able to find them. Uh, FTG Software makes a lot of uh, basic programs available. Uh, oh, just as I scroll down here, here's this color grid plots. Um, if we click on that, this is a basic program. This one was uh, developed by and designed by uh, FTG Software. And it shows you colors, uh, as you can see, uh, angle of incidence and wavelength. You can go ahead and download these. You can download the Excel files, you can download the basic files, you can download designs. Uh, FTG software makes all of that uh, freely available. Take a look at them, modify them yourselves, um, and use them. Uh, start to automate. It's uh, a lot easier than, uh, than you might think. Okay, the next thing I wanted to talk about today is the ophthalmic green. So I've already got Ophthalmic AR Green open. We're going to take a look at that. And as you can see here, this is your standard uh, AR coding for ophthalmics. Um, one of the things you'll notice if, uh, if you work in ophthalmics or in eyewear, uh, this looks normal. If you're in uh, precision optics, a typical uh, AR coding is going to look quite different. It's actually going to be um, less than half a percent from 400 to 700 nanometers. Uh, the color may be purple, it may be blue, it may be uh, a little bit yellowish or something like that. Um, but in uh, precision optics, uh, the main goal of an AR coating, in this case in the visible spectrum, is to have it as low as possible from 400 to 700 nanometers, uh, with the average being probably less than half a percent. And so uh, in the past uh, year and a half or so, uh, I've been asking around and wanting to know um, why AR coatings uh, in ophthalmics um, have some reflection in them. Uh, back in the day when um, AR coatings uh, started to become marketed to people and started to be popular, one of the things that people wanted to do was um, stop the reflection from the uh, eyeglasses, from the lenses itself, so that people can see your eyes. And this was marketed to uh, salesmen or insurance adjusters or, uh, let's say, lawyers or whatever the case may be. Those are 
the examples on the high end. Um, but what you want to do is stop that reflection from uncoated glass uh, so that people can see your eyes. And when people can see your eyes, they become more comfortable. If they, all they see is the reflection of um, uh, fluorescent lights, then it's, uh, it makes the person you're talking to uncomfortable. So I have my glasses here, and the one thing I want to point out is you can see that reflection. And um, there is a green tinge to it. I don't know if you can make that out. I'm hoping you can. Uh, but the more time that we now spend in front of um, computers and screens like this, this is what we're really seeing. And if you look at um, selfies online, uh, Google Plus or Facebook or whatever the case may be, uh, if you do any online uh, meeting with GoToMeeting or FaceTime with uh, Apple, you'll get a lot of this. And um, this is kind of... Uh, antithetical to why we put AR coatings on eyeglasses. Um, so I'm kind of putting that question out there to you to really see what the answer is. Um, as I said a little bit earlier, uh, AR coatings are on eyeglasses are typically green in reflection. Um, some of them that we're, we're getting now are a little bit blue. Uh, but my question is, why green? Why blue? And why 1% the peak of our uh, photosensitive, photosensitivity of our eyes, uh, our uh, photopic vision. Uh, if the true uh, requirement of an anti-reflection coating on glasses is to uh, reduce reflection, um, why is it that we're designing these ARs with, uh, with reflection in them? So if you want to answer any questions, comments about that, uh, my email address is right there, DaveTaddy at CodersTech.com. Let me know what you think. Um, I really want to know. I, I, I get different answers uh, from different people in different industries uh, as to why um, there's still reflection. Uh, obviously, we can't bring that all the way down to zero, but um, ophthalmic ARs are designed to give that color, give that reflection. And uh, based on the answers that I get, uh, I'll update everybody in the next Coders Tech that I do uh, on YouTube here. Okay, I'm just going to take a minute and talk to you about uh, a company that I know called Intelvac. Intelvac is... Uh, a thin films company. They make um, AR coding machines. They make coding machines, not just AR coding machines. They make coding machines. Um, they've been around a long time. Uh, they do custom uh, coding chambers from optics to uh, solar, semiconductors. Uh, they do Pretty much whatever you need, as far as I can tell. I've, I've uh, visited their labs. I've visited their production facility, uh, their manufacturing facility. Uh, and uh, take a look at uh, what Intelvac has to offer at intelvac.com. I-N-T-L-V-A-C.com. Uh, one thing I want to point out is not only do they uh, make coating chambers, um, full automation, whether it's uh, evaporative, thermal, EGUN, uh, magnetron sputtering, ion beam sputtering, uh, whatever your requirements are, they can meet it. But they, can, they also do uh, coating uh, service. If you need anything coated, please go to intelvac.com and uh, check them out. Click the contact page, uh, the contact link, and uh, ask them questions. They'll get back to you uh, quickly. The service is great. Um, so if you need coating chambers, uh, chamber parts, pumps, uh, chambers themselves, automation done, or if you just need something coated, if you need a small batch, large batch, uh, they can handle it. Uh, they do a great job there. Uh, please check them out. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is nanotechnology, uh, 3D printing. A little while ago, 
um, I went and talked to uh, a manufacturer close to me uh, here in the in the Greater Toronto area that uh, makes 3D printers and sells them. And what I wanted to know was uh, how close are we really to printing lenses? How close are we to um, printing optics uh, of any kind, really? Because um, we're going to get there, really. Uh, we can make all kinds of cool and interesting things with 3D printing. It's been around for uh, several years now. And uh, one of the things that I found out um, through this particular manufacturer uh, is that the, um, the size of the 3D printing or the resolution of the 3D printing uh, was plus or minus, I believe it was 127 microns. And so that's, in our world, in, in coding, that's huge. Uh, 127 microns is out of the ballpark, really uh, unusable. For printing lenses, uh, if, for example, if you want to print eyeglasses, which are all plastic made of CR39, uh, 127 nanometers, uh, either way isn't going to, uh, sorry, 127 microns either way isn't really going to uh, affect the outcome. It does take a while. Uh, printing lenses does take some time in the uh, 3D space uh, that they have there. Um, but uh, we're getting there. Uh, they're, they don't quite have materials or a, a final product that is completely transparent uh, due to the topography of the final part product but they're also working on that and they're getting there. Um, with a plus or minus of 127 microns uh, that means we really can't um, print the coatings as well because that's what I was really getting at. If we can print lenses that's one thing. We know, we know they're going to get there, but what happens if they can print coatings as well? With a 3D printer, with several uh, materials uh, in the print heads, you'd be able to print coatings back and forth, pr sorry, print the lenses back and forth, and then when it comes time, print the actual different refractive index materials in the proper thicknesses with some uh, degree of uh, precision and actually print the coating on. We're not there yet, obviously. But recently, uh, just a little while ago, I noticed on nanotechnology world dot, uh, sorry, nanotechnologyworldnews.blogspot.ca, this article, Invention Jet Prints Nanostructures with Self-Assembling Material. Now I re read this over, take a look at it. You can see the link is right here. Uh, take a look at this. Uh, this is still something that is uh, done in the university lab only. Um, but what this really shows us is that uh, we're getting there. Uh, it's not going to be long uh, before we're printing lenses with the coatings on them, um, in my opinion anyway. I was speaking to a former colleague, uh, I went up for a barbecue, um, and we were just kind of talking casually about this, and uh, he believes that uh, one day there's going to be two types of, of uh, jobs available. One is making 3D printers, and two is operating 3D printers. Uh, whether he's right or not, I don't know. Um, but what we can see here is uh, it won't be long before we're printing lenses and possibly even printing with a high degree of um, precision the coatings right on the lenses uh, using all kinds of different materials. Um, so they'll be used in all kinds of, uh, of applications. Take a look at the article. It is interesting. Take a look at Nanotechnology World. Um, Nanotechnology World uh, I follow on both Facebook and Google Plus and uh, also on LinkedIn as well. Um, really, really interesting stuff uh, pertinent to what we do uh, in optical coatings. Uh, so check them out. Okay. So I think that's it for today. Um, please let me know what you think, uh, what you thought of this uh, 
webinar in a way, uh, you can contact me at davetadio at coderstech.com. Uh, questions, comments, uh, let me know if you want to join in actually. Uh, there will be room uh, in the next uh, couple of broadcasts that I do um, of these webinars. Uh, give me your answer to why AR coatings on eyeglasses are green and they have 1% reflection uh, in photopic vision. Uh, I think that's it. Thank you very much for watching and uh, please send me your, uh, your comments and questions. Thanks.